Now, the last thing that I want to show in my demo is the wallet. And I want to give you a look at how the wallet spans a wide range of features and scenarios. So I'm going to scroll down here where you'll see I've got my wallet tile. And I'm going to open up the wallet and show you in, on my personal phone how the wallet is storing a bunch of stuff that I would ordinarily store in the real wallet I'd carry in my pocket. And uh, what you see here is two lists of things. At the left, there's an all list of a whole bunch of different uh, kinds of payment instruments and membership cards. And at the right is a list of deals. Think of the deals area as a folder for the coupons that you might have cut out of the paper, but now it's digitally stored. Um, let's take a look at these in, in some more detail. I'm going to come back here to the all list. And you can see I've got things like a Chase credit card. Um, that's a credit card, and it says there, at purchases. I've got my Chase Premier Plus card. That's a debit card that goes with my checking account. My Delta Sky Miles account, my PayPal, my San Francisco Public Library. And what I'm going to do is give you a look inside some of these. Now, what you're actually seeing is our wallet UI. And this UI gets lit up with data coming from those apps and services because a third-party app got installed on the phone. Part of our platform is a means for a third-party app to expose its data and web service content through the wallet in a very straightforward way so a user can go to the wallet and see a summary of the benefit from all these things. And when I open the, the Chase Premier Plus card, you can see here it gives me information about things like my balance. My checking account here has uh, $1,300. There's my, the phone number I can call if I need to talk some, to somebody. If I pan over, we ping the service and pull down a history of transactions. So you can easily check to see whether transactions that are happening are ones that you made. And then back here at the upper right, you'll see a message coming from Chase that says, I've got a quick pay request from Kim Abercrombie. It's a way of that app or service notifying me of important things anytime I glanceably go to the wallet. So what I'm going to do is tap that, which launches the Chase app. Now I know for some of you Windows Phone users in the audience who are also customers of Chase Bank, you might be saying to yourself, wait a minute, there isn't a Chase app in the Windows Phone marketplace. There soon will be, and what we are showing is an early sample of that Chase app under development. We're working with Chase to bring their great range of customer benefits like quick pay, like scanning checks and being able to deposit them as part of a native Windows Phone app that will be available later this year. But what you're seeing here is a sample. I can tell there are some people who are Chase customers that are looking forward to that. Uh, what you're seeing here is a sample of how that app integrates directly with the wallet. I could use Windows Phone's already existing deep linking to connect from the message straight into the Chase app area where I might accept the request from Kim to do a Chase Quick Pay. And right now I'm not going to do that. You get the idea. The wallet connects to third-party apps both by displaying some of their data and by giving users rich links between the wallet experience itself and the apps. So now what I want to do is go back here, and I'm going to show you uh, a little bit about how the wallet works with deals and what deals are about. As I said, imagine that deals in your wallet is a, is a section of your wallet where you put coupons, except these are digital coupons, and you could get them from a whole bunch of different sources. And a little later on, I'm going to show you how you get those coupons. But first, um, you notice here my, my deals are sorted by expiration. I've got a deal at Brownies Hardware to get hardware for to get $30 worth of hardware for only $15. And because that's at the top of the list, it's prompting me that I might want to take care of it. When I open this up, you get a sense for how these deals enable redemption. In this case, the Brownies hardware deal includes a QR code. I can simply open my deal card, show up the point of sale terminal, have them scan my phone, and get my $30 worth of hardware for just $15. It brings these things together in one place where users can store them just like they store them in their real wallet. Now, let me walk you through how I might use the wallet in a more complete scenario and actually obtain things like deals in the real world. So I'm going to scroll down here and uh, choose my San Francisco Public Library card. Imagine I have finished my demo and talk today. I can finally relax. I'm going to head to the library, find something nice to read, get my book, 
scan my library card barcode as I check out my book in the real world. I'm going to exit the library and say, man, I need to find a great place to sit down and enjoy this book. So I'm going to touch right here in my library card on the library's address and bring up the new mapping that's enabled via Nokia Maps. There you can see uh, the mapping support. And I'm going to touch the local scout uh, button here. Those of you familiar with Windows Phone 7.5, you're familiar with local scout, which takes a neighborhood or an area and suggests things like places to eat and drink. And what you see here looks like the old local scout, although I'm going to point out one difference, which is that as I pan down this list of places to eat and drink, many of them have deals. And that's the, that's the line there in white at Cafe Sapore that says $3.29 beers on tap. This place is rated four and a half stars. I can click it. I'm going to look at the place card, which gives me information about this, helps me find it, get directions, and so on. But what I want to do actually is tap that deal, because that deal seems interesting to me. And now I've opened up something that's new in Windows Phone 8, the deal card. The deal card is like a representation of a digital coupon. Here you can see this deal. I can go down here and share it with other people. I can pin it to my start menu as a tile. But what I'm going to do instead is right up there at the top, you see it says save for later. I'm going to add it to my wallet. I click that. Now that deal has been saved in my wallet. And if I use the phone, navigate around, and then later on, I'm going to imagine that I've showed up at that coffee shop and it's time for me to redeem my deal. I click on the wallet, pan over, and there's my Cafe Sapore item down at the bottom of the list. And I can redeem it in one of the ways as I showed you earlier. Pretty straightforward. These deals can be found in web searches, in place cards. They can be handed from one person to another. They can be part of what a third-party app offers. And we think they're a real beneficial part of the wallet feature that's part of the new Windows Phone 8 coming this fall. Now, the last thing I want to show in Wallet is how the wallet takes all your financial information and it uses it for financial transactions that happen on the phone. As I mentioned, you could use it for financial transactions in the real world, but I don't have a device today with a secure NFC card to show a real world payment. So instead, what you're seeing is all the benefits you get if you don't yet or your mobile operator does not yet have one of those SIMs. Um, I'm going to go into settings here because as the place where you would store all your financial information or your financial transaction cards, one of the things that makes sense to do is for the wallet to have a pin. So I'm going into wallet settings and I'm going to add the ultra secure pin 1111. Don't tell anyone. I'll try hard not to lose this phone. Um, and I'm going to check the box to use the wallet pin to protect any purchases that I make on the phone. So now, if I try to access my wallet or if I try to go to the marketplace and buy an app, I have to put in the wallet pin. If I'm one of those people that doesn't want to have a pin for my whole phone, but I don't want someone who's borrowing my phone to be able to actually buy things, I can now use the wallet pin to do that. And I want to give you, I want to show you how this works in a real example. But in the process of doing that, I'm going to show you something else that's new in the platform for Windows Phone 8. So I've gone here and launched an app from a company called Inrix. Uh, Inrix offers a service that gives you information about real-time traffic. And what you see here is um, traffic in the area. And Inrix is a free app in the marketplace. But what Inrix is doing in this example of their Windows Phone 8 version is take advantage of a new platform feature we're enabling for software developers to enable in-app purchasing using our purchasing backend and the wallet. So right there, you see a menu item for upgrade to Inrix Pro. I'm going to choose that, and now our platform UI is being displayed. Inrix has called out to Windows Phone and says, hey, can you make a transaction for me in the following amount? Now, I just put a pin on my wallet. So before I can buy the Pro version of Inrix, I've got to put in my wallet pin. And here's our wallet UI giving me the option to confirm this purchase. It's $24.99 for Inrix Pro. And to choose which card in my wallet I want to use to pay for this item. You, you saw in the wallet screen itself that Chase credit card was marked with an item that told that it's being used for purchases on the phone. And there you see it showing up as the default. I'll click Buy. We contact the service. We validate the payment. Uh, and voila, I've now upgraded, as you see in the upper left, 
from Enrix Basic to Enrix Pro. And all of the work that we've done to enable great payment methodologies, whether it's credit cards or mobile operator billing, translates in benefit to third-party apps who use this in-app purchasing capability. Um, we actually think this is a pretty big deal because if you think about the kinds of ways that mobile developers are monetizing their apps today, in-app purchase is a big one, and it's growing. And we think that once we enable this, we'll see the rate of apps in our marketplace continue to increase as we give developers this next very important way to monetize their investments and get a return on them on Windows Phone. So that wraps up my live demo of actual working Windows Phone 8 code. Um, I do have one more thing that I want to show in conclusion uh, as part of my demo, uh, but this is a video. And what it is, what we tried to do was write some real code. So what you're going to see in the video is not fake mocked up stuff. This is a real app that we wrote both for the phone and for Windows 8 that shows how a software developer can solve a real world problem for a family using the shared core between the phone and a slate. And so uh, I'm going to show you the experience that a family might have as they go out to lunch at a local cafe. Let's run the video. <laughs> 